of Solomon. Do you know Solomon? He wrote the three books. What is that? Number one, Proverbs. 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 Yeah. Proverbs and Ecclesiastic. Ecclesiastic and Song of Songs. Song of Songs. Yeah. And then you can see the even one King and Second King. You can see the prayer of Solomon. Today, uh, after Solomon built uh, his uh, the holy temple, we call the Solomon Temple. You know how long he spent time to build the temple of God? Fourteen years. Seven years. Yeah. Seven years. To build his house, how long? Hmm? Thirteen years. His his palace. Thirteen years. He built the temple of God first. After that, he built his own uh, palace. And if you look at verse 22, Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord and in front of the whole assembly of Israel. Did what he did? He spread, spread out his hand toward heaven and he lifted up his hand like this and then pray. You understand? Actually, he, he was kneeled down. He prayed like this. And verse 23, he prayed like this. Three things he prayed. Number one, there is no God like you in heaven, on earth, under the earth. He prayed, Lord, there is no God like you. Number two, you who keep your covenant. <coughs> Do you understand? This man, King Solomon, he asking God, Lord, I know you always keep your covenant. You keep your promise. And therefore, when you pray to God, you need to come before God and pray with the you know, promise of God, with covenant. Do you know when you come before God, you can come before God with scripture. This is his word. Do you know, you promise with me according to scripture. Can you answer me? And he will answer you. Number three, you give me, you give love with me favor for your people. This kind of prayer. Lord God, I know you love your people. Can you remember that? That kind of prayer. Verse 24. You have kept your promise to your servant David. Do you know this man King Solomon? He prayed again and again. Oh Lord God, you have kept your promise to your servant David, my father. You see, he reminded God, you promised me your father and my father and your servant David. I'm his son. Can you keep your promise? Therefore, this man King Solomon, he come before God. And he reminded God, you promised like this with your own your mouth. Even verse 25, Lord God of Israel, please keep your promise. Can you imagine? He continually asking God, keep your promise when we obey your word, especially. It's a condition lecture. When you obey your word, can you keep your promise and then can you do it for your children? This is a wonderful prayer. Wonderful prayer. Do you know who is the mother of King Solomon? Bathsheba. Bathsheba. Bathsheba and David come to adultery. They get the one boy. The boy survived or not? No. Died. The way they will see is what? Dead. Dead. Uh, God is merciful to God. And God gave one of son. After the David repented for sins, David fasting and pray and Begging God, pleading God, Lord, save my son, for son. From 43, son died. David, he gets a great blessing, actually. You know, he comes to other tree. He comes to murder. To kill the Uriah. Husband of, you know, Bathsheba. He's a wicked man, David. But David asked for mercy of God. He confessed the sins. Yeah. But it's very important, verse 26. Do you know, again, do you know, King Solomon said, keep your promise. Can you, can you imagine? This man, Solomon, he come before God, he asking God, remember what you say for your servant David, my father. Again and again, he asking God, please God, keep your promise, keep your covenant. Yeah? Can I ask a question? If God promised with you something, do you think God break his promise? Yes or no? Never ever break it. But who break it? You. You and me. We are the main problem. You understand? When God promised with us, 
Uh, we are the one who's breaking the crops. Do you understand? This is details. the crop. Yeah? Details. Yeah? Details. Details? Many times. <laughs> God <laughs> promised with us. He said, wait. You should wait. You should say, when God said, go, you should go, but we didn't go. Do you understand? We have to keep his promise. You know, God is a gracious God. God is a God of justice and gracious. He will give us grace and mercy. Also, he tell the truth. He will rebuke us, correct us. You know, we are so happy when God loves us and God gives us favor and bless us. We enjoy it. But when God corrects us, when God disciplines us, when God, you know, ridiculous, how you respond? Yeah, we shouted many, many times before God. Oh, God, don't, don't do it. Please, I beg you. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember one uh, lady, she came from Pakistan. She oh, asked me, she kneeled <laughs> down before me, Pastor Paul, can you pray for me? And uh, another Pakistan pastor surrounded her. And she said to me, Pastor Paul, uh, when I was 18, I started praying for my husband. Now I'm 42. How old? How many years you pray? 24. Anyway, I, I understand. I have some compassion for her. And uh, she kneeled down, she prayed. She asking God for her husband the last 24 years, but she didn't get husband. Anyway, I lay my hand and pray for her. I think I pray around one minute, two minutes, Lord, have mercy on her. Would you give her best husband? I was praying. While I was praying for her, suddenly she lift up her, her head like this. And you know what she did? She used the finger like this. She's so angry with God. She said, God. I prayed for my husband the last 24 years. Where is my husband? Can you imagine? She, like this. When I saw her, she, I saw her finger like this. You know what I did? I covered her finger like this. It's very funny. <laughs> like the com comedy, you know. Uh, the movie. I covered her finger. Please don't do it. Look, look like I'm, a, I'm the, the protect of my father in heaven. Oh, don't do it, please, lady. Sister, don't do it. God will give you best husband. You need to keep wait. I fully understand why she angry with God. I pray unto you for my husband the last 24 years. Where is my husband? She was so angry. So I told her sister, you need to repent your sins. In the beginning she was angry. After she confessed her sins. Thanks be to God. Do you understand? Unfortunately, many, many Christians, they're angry with God. They try to twist the hands of God, give me these things. They demand God. They command God, do it for me. Yeah? If you don't, I don't believe in it anymore. Can you imagine that kind of terrible attitude in the church, in the house of the Lord, that who claim the Christian? It's terrible. You shouldn't do it in Jesus' name. Never do it in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen? Never ever do it. Never upset by God. Never blame God. Never mocking God. Ever, ever. This man, King Solomon, he prayed unto the Lord, remember what you promised your servant David, my father. He prayed like this. Verse 27, he Say to God, oh God, you are great God. You know, he built the, the temple. And uh, God cannot dread in the only in temple. He is omnipresence. He can do, do any everywhere. Whole world, whole universe. Look at the, can you look at the uh, Isaiah? Isaiah 66, verse 1 and 2. <clears throat> Book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 1 and 2 say, I can read it for you, Isaiah 66, verse 1 and 2. This is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne, my throne, and the earth is my footstool. 
And where is the house you will build for me? Where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? And so they came, they came, came into being, declares the Lord. This is the one I esteem, he who is humble and contained, uh, contrite in spirit, and uh, tremble at my <coughs> word. Yeah. You understand? God cannot only dwell in the box we made. No, God is everywhere. Solomon, he built the temple of God by saying, not only this place, I am everywhere. Yeah, we have to respect God, we have to fear God. Yeah. Therefore, this man, he prayed, you know, Solomon prayed, hear the cry, hear the cry, and the prayer. You know, when you pray unto God, Lord, let your ear to listen to our prayer. You understand? Let the, his ear listen. That is why Book of Revelation says, Who has got ear? Let them hear what the Holy Spirit say. Do you understand what the Holy Spirit say to you? You have the ear, yeah? When you have the ear, can you hear the Holy Spirit? What the Holy Spirit say to you? Amen. Yeah? It's Amen. very important. Yesterday, somebody called me. Pastor, we are born again, but we are living sin because we don't have the wedding ceremony in the heart, in the house of the Lord, but we live together. That is a sin. You know, I met so many people in all of the world. They just live together without the, you know, wedding ceremony in the, in, uh, under the under the eyes of the Lord, under the blessing of God. Do you understand? They just live in sin. They confess the sins. They asked me, Pastor Paul, can you come into the wedding ceremony today? And I did it this morning. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. That couple is so sincere because they are born again. They don't want to dwell in the sin anymore. That is why they asked you, can you open your heart and do it? I said, yes, I will do it. I will arrange it. This morning after morning praying, I was praying for this couple. Continue last night and this morning. I will pray for them continue. I thank speak to God. Do you understand? Then I met some missionary children, pastors' children. I ask them, why you live in sin? You don't get the in a marriage. Just you live together as a partner. What's wrong with you? Your mother is born again. Your mother is a pastor. And another another couple is, your father is a pastor. I told you so many. They just live. Not in UK, everywhere, in Korea, Africa, everywhere. Now, nah. do you understand? In these days, it's like it's normal now. Without the marriage, you just live together. And do you know what they say? We need to know we live together for a while, and I need to find out this man is a good man or not. If he don't, I'll separate. So many, so many. This is very, very shame now. But anyway, what is my point is, oh Lord, hear my cry. And God can hear. And I can hear the voice of God also. Yeah? And you know what the Bible says? You know, verse 29, 1 King chapter 8, verse 29. <coughs> oh Lord, your eyes is here in the house of the Lord. God can see. God can watch. God knows everything. Do you know that? I don't know what you are doing in your room. When you are alone in your room, God is in your room. What is your true character when you are alone in your room? What you are doing? You fear God? You worship God? You meditate the word of God in, 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 your own, in your room? And then fear God? That is your true character. But if you come to the sin when you are alone, that is your true character also. Therefore, be careful in these days. You know, God's eyes everywhere. Yeah. Look at the Psalm 28, verse 1 and 2. Psalm 28. Psalm 28, verse 1 and 2. To you I call, O Lord, my Lord. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. For if you remain silent, I will be like those who have gone down to the pit. 
Hear my cry for mercy. I call to you for help, and I lift up my hands toward your most holy place. You see? Hear my cry. Oh Lord, help me. You know, Psalm 1, 2, 1, verse 1 and 2 say, it is one of my favorite scriptures. Psalm 121, verse 1 and 2. You know that scripture? I lift up my eye to the hills. Every Friday we go to the mountain. We go to the hills. And I lift up my eyes to the hills. When you lift up your eyes to the hills, can you get something from hills? What is it on the hills? Nothing. Only trees and wind. It's very cold. But I, Psalm 1 to 1, verse 1 and 2. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. He is my helper. Therefore, it's nothing wrong. We can ask him, oh Lord God, help me. Help me. I know the one widow. She is sleeping on the floor uh, in the new house. But she has not the bed. By the grace of God, last week she got the bed. But she needed a mattress. And the pastor asked me, and Pastor Paul, the mattress price is uh, two mattresses around $100. I say, pray together. Don't ask me to help. Ask God for help. He will help. You understand? I lift up my eye to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help <coughs> comes from the Lord who may cover heaven and earth. He is our helper. He knows what we need. King Solomon, he said, Lord God, hear our cry. Hear our prayer. And then, you know, very interesting, verse 31, 32. You know, when people come into the sins, Lord, forgive their sins. Forgive their sins. You know? Solomon, he knows what does it mean of a prayer. His most important prayer is, Lord, forgive all our sins. That kind of prayer. So very interesting. 1 King, chapter 8, verse 33 and 34. 1 King chapter 8, verse 33 and 34. When your people, Israel, have been defeated by an enemy because they have sinned against you. When enemy attacked the Israel? When? When? When they sin against God. When they commit the sins before God. And then, do you know what? Can you look at me? God included the enemy and <laughs> attacked the Israelite. This, this, this principle is exactly the same. Even now, can I say to you, if you if you sin against the God, God incurred the enemy to attack you. This is not my word, it's word of God. When people of Israel, people of God, have been defeated, they have been defeated by, defeated by the, an enemy because of they commit the sins. And look, you know, King Solomon prayed like this. And when they turn back to you and confess, your name, pray and make a supplication to you in this temple, then hear from heaven, forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land you give their fathers. You see, very important, unfortunately, people when they struggle, yeah, because of their sins, they don't turn to God. They turn away from God. This is most difficult. Do you understand? When people come into the sins, definitely according to the scripture, enemy <laughs> defeated. <laughs> they are defeated by an enemy, which means Satan. Do you understand? Where your sin is dead. But we need to turn to God. I conclude the three prayers of King Solomon. Number one prayer, Lord God, remember your covenant. Remember your promise. Therefore, we have to meditate the word of God day and night. If you meditate the word of God day and night, yeah, the word of God is your spiritual food. The word of God is a lamp to your feet and light for your path. The word of God guides you. Do you understand? How can you cleanse your heart? The word of God. The Bible says the word of God is water. You can cleanse your cloth by washing powder. But how can you cleanse inside your heart? Is spiritual washing powder, which is the word of God. Yeah? 
cleans your heart. He's a living one person. Cleans your heart. And this is a prayer when King Solomon prayed, Lord, remember your word. Remember your word. Remember your promise. Remember your covenant. Number two prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Listen to our prayer. Answer us. Answer us. This is powerful prayer. Remember your promise. Answer for us. Finally, Father God, forgive all our sins. Oh God of Israel, forgive all our sins. We have to pray unto you, Lord, forgive all our sins. Do you want to see the revival in your life? Confess your sins. You know, revival, yeah, revival, and the repentance sins is always working together, friend. Where there is a revival, there is a repentance prayer. Where there is a repentance prayer, revival coming. We cannot separate. Revival. Do you want to see the revival in your life? Repent your sins. That is why I sent the text message many times. Confess your sins. Repent your sins. You still love me? You still respect me? <laughs> if you don't need me to repent your sins, seriously, okay? You understand? I believe that these days, uh, the, the true pastor in these days telling the truth to the people, asking the congregation to repent the sins in the last day, especially when the preacher asking the congregation to repent to the sins, he's not, you know, popular, you know, preaching <coughs> in these days. In these days, the popular preaching is a healing, prosperity, blessing, joy, and then glory, all these beautiful things in these days. But I have to tell you, in the last day, many false prophets are telling us some strange things, telling the truth. John the Baptist, he never compromised with the word. He telling the truth. Apostle John telling the truth. You shall know the truth to set you free. Greetings. King Solomon prayer. Lord, remember your covenant. Remember your scripture. Remember your promise. Remember your word, Father God. Number two. Lord, hear our prayer. I know we know. Our help come from Almighty God. Not from somebody, from you. King Solomon, he had got the full of wisdom. He had those all silvers and golds. He has got all blessings on earth. No one compared with King Solomon. Do you understand? But he still say, I, I need your help. All the people of Israel need your help. Finally, this most important prayer, Lord, Forgive all our sins. When uh, all the people of Israel defeated by an enemy because they commit their sins and then they turn to you, can you forgive them? Can you forgive them? You need to know why our life is so stable, unstable. Why? Because of the sins. Do you want to be stable in your life? Do you want to stand firm for the glory of the Lord? How can you stand strong for Jesus when you confess your sins? By the blood of Lord Jesus, He can cleanse you and purify you, and you can stand firm. This evening we study together the prayer of King Solomon. Three things he pray: remember your covenant, help us, forgive us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, King Solomon, he had everything. After he built the temple, he pray, Lord God. Remember your covenant. Remember your promise. You promise with your servant David, my father. Can you keep that promise? He pray unto God. And he pray, Lord, we need your help. And finally, he asked him, God, Lord, when people they struggle because of their sins, when they turn to you, would you forgive them? Forgive all our sins. Oh, Jesus, in this day, whole world is struggling because of coronavirus. But this is the best time to confess those sins in the eyes of God. Forgive all our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Be blessed. Jesus loves you.